wonder why we're here? It's one of life's greatest mysteries, isn't it? Why are we here? I mean, are we really just a bunch of machines built with the purpose of hauling cargo around and nothing more? Or is there maybe something more to us? A bigger legacy, you know? A brand to represent? I don't know, man, but it keeps me up at night. What? I mean, why are we here in a fucking racing game? Oh. We just don't belong here, you know? I mean, not only are we a part of a DLC, but who's actually gonna drive us? We're just slow, shitty cargo vehicles with no legacy or racing history behind us. Whoa, 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 hey, hold on. Calm down. No racing history. Speak for yourself. I have. No. What do you mean, no? They took the chassis of a GT40 Dude, and- shut up! I don't wanna hear it, alright? Whatever it is, you have to say, I don't want to hear it. Okay, okay, fine, fine. So, why are we here after all? Okay, you know what? I don't know, and I don't care anymore. And for God's sake, what the hell is that music? The 2554 AMG Transport Dynamics M12S Force Application Vehicle, more commonly known as a Warthog, is a military vehicle from the future, adapted for civilian use. Now you might be wondering, but Purple, if this vehicle is from the future year of 2554, how are you making a guide for it? The answer to that question is rather simple, you are not actually watching the Purple Guy 123 video. You are in fact, watching the purple guy 124 video. Yes, somehow these videos were still a thing almost 500 years later. Anyways, you're not here to hear about the future, because trust me, it's boring. You're here to hear about the warthog, which is still kinda boring, but slightly less so. First off, let's start with its name. No, not the complicated one from the beginning of the video, I mean the nickname warthog. It was given this name because of the two toe hooks it has on the front, which resemble those of a warthog, even though the whole car kind of just resembles a big cat, like a puma or something. As I was saying earlier, despite being a military vehicle belonging to the UNSC, this warthog was actually adapted for civilian use, meaning that it has lost quite literally the only good thing about it, aka the chain gun, which would be extremely useful in Forza for shooting those filthy meta car losers. It also lost some other things such as four-wheel steering, although maybe that's a good thing, as the Warthog in Halo games is very well known for constantly flipping over. Seriously, this thing is actually worse than a Reliant Robin. How this is a military vehicle is absolutely beyond me. However, that is luckily not the case in Horizon 4, as the car is very well planted to the ground, as any 2.5 ton vehicle should be, but you can still flip it, if you're an idiot like me. Performance wise, I used to think the Warthog was awful, mostly because every time I have come across a Warthog in a cross country race, they were always slow as hell, and for some reason never had 800 pi. However, when I jumped into the thing, and tried out some cross country for myself, I was really pleasantly surprised to find out, that this thing fucking slaps, and I'm not kidding. I did 17 races in this thing, and got first place in all of them except for the first one in which I flipped the car on lap 1. Keep in mind, that when I say first place, I don't mean I had a close battle with anyone for it, most of the time I managed to snack first place within the first few seconds of the race, and then easily managed to create a large gap between me and second place. In addition, despite this car's biggest weakness, which I will reveal later, I kept on getting great results in Free Roam Rush 2. I didn't get first place all of the time, but when I didn't get first place, I instead got second or third. And then, after all of this, I went to record the tuning process for the Warthog, and found out that, somehow, a long time ago, I had actually engine swapped it with a racing V8 and completely forgot about it. However, due to a lack of small PI upgrades, the stock engine for the Warthog cannot actually get it to the top of A class, unless we drive train swap it to rear wheel drive. And trust me, you don't want to drive a heavy rear wheel drive truck in cross country, so for this vehicle alone, I'm forcing an exception on the no engine swaps rule. It's a fictional car anyways. 
because of the results I've had with the Warthog, I feel inclined to say that this might be one of, if not the best cross country vehicle for A class, however I do not play cross country that much, so don't quote me on that. Maybe I just got lucky, and to teach you just how much cross country and free roam rush rely on luck, we have brought here our studio's professional racing driver. Some say, somehow he manages to get a perfect tan every single summer. All we know, is he is. Sands from Undertale. Let's watch. If you've been following these series since the start, you'll have realized, that I haven't done a guide on a single cross country car. In fact, this will probably be the first and only guide for a cross country tune in the entire channel. This is mostly due to the fact, that cross country races are simply not enjoyable for me, or most other people. In fact, it's probably my least played game mode, the reason being, that races mostly rely on you getting lucky, and surviving without making mistakes, instead of sticking to the fastest line. With this said, today we won't be teaching you how to take corners, as honestly in this game mode you can take the most retarded line and still get away with it, as long as you don't hit a barrier or miss a checkpoint. Instead, I will be giving you small tips on how to survive a cross country race, as really the key to success in these races, is just to not make any mistakes, since the natural danger of driving in such dangerous conditions can make even the smallest mistake have huge consequences. Essentially, all of the tips I'll be giving you revolve around one thing, keeping all four of your wheels on the ground at all times. Although it's fun, and seems to naturally be part of these types of races, you want to avoid jumps as much as possible. Most cross-country tracks give you an option of either taking a jump, or taking an alternate route, and I still see many players take the jump. Every second in which your wheels aren't touching the ground is a second where your car isn't accelerating and gaining speed. Not only that, but jumps are quite risky too, as getting a bad angle before takeoff, or screwing up the landing can cost you anything from milliseconds to an entire race. With this said, every time you are given an option between two routes, and one of them has a jump, always take the route without it. However, there are many times, where the only route you can take is a jump. For these jumps, it's important to keep two things in mind. First of all, adjust your trajectory as early as you can, as if you correct your line too late, inertia from doing so can throw your line off in the landing, and make you either crash or spin out. Secondly, although you don't always have the option to do this, avoid landing on all four wheels at the same time. This might seem like weird advice, but you want your wheels, to start touching the ground one at a time. This is to avoid your vehicle bouncing back into the air, therefore minimizing the risks of losing control after a landing. And speaking of jumps, almost equally as dangerous as them are bumps in the road, as they can be very hard to see, yet still throw your car off. Admittedly, the Warthog's soft suspension and large ground clearance can help in ignoring most bumps, but you should still be ready to make any quick corrections in case you need to. The Warthog is a great vehicle for cross country, however it has one big weakness, and that is, that its top speed is laughably slow, at just 140 miles per hour, or 225 kilometers per hour. However, to my surprise, this has not given me any issues in races, as cross country isn't about how fast you can go, but how long you can keep a good speed for. And, perhaps the biggest surprise of all, is that despite me being worried about having to put up with such a low top speed in free roam rush, the Warthog was still able to completely demolish the competition, as most of the times I didn't get first place were 100% driver error. I have no idea how to explain this, it just works. Now that you've mastered all of this, it's time to move on to the car itself. Thank you for showing us how to drive, Sans from Undertale. Like I said, unfortunately we'll have to engine swap the Warthog, as the stock engine's upgrade options leave us with a choice of not reaching 800 pi, or going just over it. With that said, swap the 7.2 liter racing V8 engine into it, I'm sure Master Chief would have done the same. Next up, go to your engine upgrades, and get a race intake manifold, followed by a race fuel system, and, lastly, a sports flywheel. You might be thinking of rear wheel drive swapping the Warthog, in order to put more PI into power, however I would advise against doing so, as the power you gain from this is not worth the incredible all wheel drive launches you'll miss out on. 
Now that you've queued up 5 hours of quality music to increase your warthog's performance, it's time to turn that shit up. For gearing, adjust your final drive towards acceleration until your top speed is 139 miles per hour, or 225 kilometers per hour. Not quick, but not too slow to help you escape from a ship whose reactor is about to blow. For alignment, get negative 0.5 camber on both the front and the rear, followed by 0.12 out at the front and 0.12 in at the back. Next up, tune your springs to 250 and 210 pounds in the front and the rear respectively, or if you're using metric, 44.6 and 37.5. Next up, for damping, adjust your front and rear rebound stiffness to 4.8 and 4.2, and your front and rear bump stiffness to 2.5 and 1.8. Get 110% braking force pressure. And lastly, for your differential, adjust your balance to 66%. And that's it. If you feel like all of that was too complicated, you can just download the tune from my Ford Sistore front, my game attack is Flamethrower XXX. Now that you're ready to find out that cross country is just free roam rush, but with checkpoints and less trees, go get some podium finishes. And remember, that centuries of evolution in mankind, have led to a military vehicle, that is essentially just an ISIS Toyota truck. Goodbye and thank you for watching.